Amen. Is the devil ever after you? Yes. Just before I got up here, I thought to myself, this has been the perfect service. And the devil said, and you're going to get up there and mess it up. <laughs> and, and, you know, he is a liar. There's no truth in him. That's right. And so I name it and claim it that what God has started, God will finish. And I'm not going to mess up anything. Come on, preacher, when you were grow I I've never preached this sermon before, I can tell you. <laughs> it's a sermon for me. It's a sermon for all of us, I think. When you were growing up and you were in the library and someone was loudly speaking and you could really hear everything, what would you do? Shh. Shh. And I want every one of us to do that right now. And close your eyes. Okay, when a child was crying because his feelings had been hurt, you might say, shh, 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 and cradle and rock the child and say, everything is going to be all right. Psalm 46, verse 10. I never have dedicated a whole sermon to this. It's about time. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I was thinking about the ebb and flow of this service. We start with I fly away and a new name written down in glory. And we end with nice, melodic, thoughtful expression of reflection and meditation as to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. God is saying to us, Shh, I'm trying to get your attention. But you've been distracted. I want you to stop thinking, talking, doing, about, school, friends, family, Spouses, children, Facebook, clothes, email and any other kind of mail, text messages, jobs, bills paid and unpaid, relationships, what's on TV, what's not on TV, what's in the news, what's not in the news, practice, sports, cell phones or any other kind of phones, Starbucks, planes, trains, buses, trucks, SUVs, and any other kind of automobiles. Dates, appointments, the weekend, the weekdays, the holidays, and any other days. God is saying, fret not. He's saying, don't, I, I want you to quit thinking and talking and doing about what you're going to wear and what you're not going to wear and what you're going to say and what you're not going to say and what you're going to do and what you're not going to do and what you're going to eat after this. Uh, come on. Amen. God is saying, none of that compares to what I have for you. But, you have to listen. You have to be available. You have to be silent. You have to be still and know that I am God. 
God is saying, and I'm not going to list all the scriptures, although I've got them all written down. God is saying, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I want you to turn to Psalm 139, because there's a lot of these scriptures that are found in Psalm 139. Psalm 139 says, O thou hast searched me and known me, thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising, thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? And we'll stop there. God is saying, I know everything about you. I know when you sit up, when you sit down, when you rise up. He says, I am familiar with your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. Matthew 10, 29 through 31. For you were made in my image, he says, Genesis 1, 27. In me you live and move and have your being, Acts 17, 20. For you are my offspring, Acts 17, 28. I knew you were before even you were conceived, Jeremiah 1 verses 4 and 5. I have chosen you when I planned creation, Ephesians 1, 11 through 12. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book, Psalm 139 verses 15 and 16. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. Acts 17, 26. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Acts 17, excuse me, Psalm 139, verse 14. I knit you together in your mother's womb, Psalm 139, verse 13, and brought you forth on the day you were born, Psalm 71, 6. I have been misrepresented by those who do not know me, John 2, verses 41 through 44. I am not distant and angry, but I am, I am the complete expression of love, 1 John 4, 16. And it is my desire to lavish you with my love, 1 John 3, 1. And God is saying, simply because you're my child and I am your father, 1 John 3, 1. I offer you more than any earthly father could ever offer you, Matthew 5, 48. Every good and perfect gift that you received comes from my hand, James 1, 17. For I am your provider. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. That's right. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Jeremiah 39, 11. I will never stop doing good to you. Jeremiah 32, or chapter 37, somewhere in there. You are my treasured possession in Exodus. I desire to 
establish you with all my soul. Jeremiah 32, 41. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. Jeremiah 33, 3. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Deuteronomy 4, 29. For I am your greatest encourager. Deuteronomy, excuse me, 1 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. Psalm 34, 10. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. Jeremiah 40, 11. And one day I will wipe away all your tears. Revelation 21, 3 and 4. And I'll take all your pain away that you've suffered on earth. Revelation 21, 3 and 4. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. John 17, 23. He came to demonstrate that I love you. I'm for you, not against you. Romans 8, 31. And I tell you that I am not counting your sins. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 10 through 19. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. 1 John 4, 10. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. Romans 8, 31. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. 1 John 3, 23. And nothing shall ever separate you from my love again. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party for you you've ever seen. Luke 15, 7. I have always been your father and I will always be your father. Ephesians 3, 14 through 16. And my question is, will you be my child? John 1, 12 through 13. I am waiting for you. Luke 15, 11 through 31. And we can respond in stillness with the words from a song. What better friend, what better father, no greater care, no other savior. My only God, the perfect lover, here I am for you to listen and to know and to be still and know that you are God. Let us pray. Quicken these words to our hearts and may you keep the reminder that we need to be still and put away the cares of this world and this life and all that it has for it is nothing compared to your greatness your love and your wonderful grace quicken these things to our hearts minds and spirits in Jesus name amen also you'll note in the Old Testament People used as a reminder jewelry. They would have bracelets on and um, necklaces on and, and ornate ornaments on to remind them of something. 
I prayed over these strings this morning. You know, when you were young, um, you, may, you may have heard the expression, put a, put a string around your finger where you can remember something. So these strings make good Bible markers. I'm not suggesting that you wear it. You can if you want to. I made them long enough so that you can cut it any way you want to. If you want to use it for that purpose, there's no magical uh, formula in this or anything. But when you think and when you hold this string, remember what I prayed over this was God as I touch these strings, may the ones who receive these strings today know and understand and remember to be still and know that you are God. Amen. I'm going to give the service back over to Brother Jason now. I'm glad that you picked a color that matches so well with all my outfits. Wear it. Thank you for that message, Brother Don. That was relevant. That was relatable. That was poignant. And it was important to hear. I appreciate that. Too often times in our lives we're so busy with helter and skelter and moving so fast. And we say, God, I'm going to do this, bless me. God, I'm going to do that, bless me. And we run full speed, expecting God to just bless us as we go, instead of stopping and waiting on God. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That means there's going to be a time to run. There's going to be a time to walk. But before you do, before you do, wait. Wait upon the Lord. Wait to hear His word. Thank you for that message, Brother Don. Hope. Hey, psst. Hope. You reminded me of a joke. There was a preacher preaching, and there was a baby, and he was just wailing. Oh, he was wailing. And the more the preacher preached, the louder the baby wailed. And finally, the mom picked the baby up and started to walk out. And the preacher said, it's okay, you don't have to leave. The baby's not bothering me. The mom turned around and said, no, but you sure are bothering him. <laughs> oh, you are dismissed in the fear of the Lord. God bless you.